All right, hi everyone. I am back here in this room. I don't know if you noticed, but I've been filming a lot of my videos in my kitchen recently, and it's nice out there. There's a nice brick backdrop and stuff, but I need a little change of scenery. Um, I don't know how else to describe it besides that. Just need to switch it up a little. It was getting a little cluttered out there. It was cluttered in here, but resetting up everything else in a different area forces me to clean it up, right? I don't know why. Anyways, that's dumb. But maybe we'll do some drawing, drawing in this video, but mostly I also wanted to show you some uh, little things I've been working on that I haven't been recording, like um, some... So my 3D modeling I've been doing, I'm gonna, we'll hop on the computer, I'll flip, show you some of my projects, uh, show you um, some of my photos that I've been taking, because I know I've been posting them a lot on Instagram and some on Twitter, but some of you aren't on Instagram and Twitter, I don't want you to miss out. Here's my camera that I recently got. Um, just, uh, it was kind of an impulse buy, I'll admit but I haven't regretted it so far. My hair looks weird. That's okay. It's okay to have weird hair. Uh, this It's a Fujifilm X-Pro3, okay? And uh, it's got a, well, it's got a lens, got one of those, um, it's called a filter on there, like a polarizing filter. And it's got the 35 millimeter F1.4, I think is, how you describe this lens? I don't know. I'm, I'm like one of those people that some photography, like actual people that are good at photography probably dislike. Like he bought that nice camera and he doesn't even know which lens he has. Like pretty much what I did is I just read a bunch of reviews. What's the best one? What's the best lens for this camera? I didn't choose this lens because I knew that it was the best lens I chose it because all the best, the reviews seemed to say so. Okay, I'm sorry. If that, okay. But uh, I've been enjoying it. It's been working good for me. Yeah. You hear that noise? It's so satisfying when it makes the noise here. Some camera ASMR. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, no, it's it's great because my other nice camera I've ever bought before was like uh, much larger, and this is like not too big to put on my neck and carry around with me like this. I, I mean, I, I kind of want a different lens cap because this one has started falling off a little bit. Maybe I don't need this lens cap. I don't know how much I need it, especially since I have the filter on there, but I don't know, it's kind of nice. I don't have to worry, it's like rubbery, so I don't have to worry about it bouncing against stuff. But I've been liking it. Here's what the uh, back of it looks like. There's like no LED screen that shows the uh, film simulation I'm using right now. You have to look through the, what the, Got camera stuff in the way. You gotta look through the viewfinder like so. Or you can change it up so it's um like this. This is the uh, non-digital viewfinder, which is really cool. Isn't this great quality? Me holding this up to this. Um, okay, I know that didn't really make any sense, all of that. All right, wait. Let me just show you some of the pictures I've been taking, okay? Let's flip through them. Okay, here we are. This is a um, video that I'm editing at the moment. It should already be on uh, on YouTube by the time I upload this one. Just one of those. This one doesn't take much editing because it's a, uh, well, it's like a real-time video that I don't do much to. Um, okay, down here. Look, here are the, here's my camera roll. There's like, you can see 2,963 items. So I've taken almost 3,000 photos. But here's the ones I've like, a hundred of them that I've chosen that I've like, okay, I'll, these ones I'll edit with uh, Lightroom, you know, call them, I'll say they're good enough. But will this thing go away down here? 
Oh, these ones are these ones were with my uh, the Canon DSLR. I was using I was practicing using the self timer. Go away. Okay, there we go. Um, these were all. Oh yeah, I mean these ones. I mean these were with the Canon, the big one. But I will say these are co pretty cool because I was out late at night, standing in the middle of the road. There are no cars, but this was like a, these were like pitch black. It was completely dark, but I was using like the extended, uh, what's it called? Extended release shutter or whatever, where you leave the camera shutter open for like 20 or 30 seconds and it slowly sucks in all the light. See, these were clouds that were moving. I think they're like stars in the background. Maybe, I don't know, maybe those are just like uh, artifacts or something. Yeah, this one was just completely pitch black, but... All right, now now these are the ones I started taking with the Fujifilm camera. Oh, these dramatic clouds. You know, it was raining. I was walking around. It was raining. I had my umbrella, thankfully, and I caught this dramatic shot of the... the, the <laughs> How can I think of the word? The postal office box truck. The mail truck? Is that what it's called? Swerving around the corner. Pretty flowers. It just rained here also. I think this is a different day. I took it with me into the into the grocery store. I wanted to take pictures of people in the grocery store, but I'm just too dang shy to take pictures of people. It's really, I mean, here's a person, but they were far away. They even looked at me and I got really shy, nervous. All oh, the clouds though. I was walking around a golf course just, they were doing some like construction or something. This guy, I, I started a small conversation with him just so I could ask him if I could take his picture. And this was like a really dark photo at first, like with a, a bright background, but I used some, some setting in Lightroom that let me brighten up the foreground without washing out the background. Cool machines here. Those are there's some dump trucks. This guy was smiling at me. They were working. I was like, what's up? I think he's looking at me again here, maybe. Some beetles. These are more, uh, what's that word? So half the time I can think of the word and half the time I can't think of the word for like the uh, extended shutter things where you leave it open, timed, re timed release or something. Anyways, this line up here, these red dots was when a fire truck went by. It looks so cool, it left like this grid of red dots. And these are all, I think this is like a 20 second thing, just cars going by at nighttime. I don't know what this is here. Cause I don't remember seeing anything create these, wig these light wiggles and these light wiggles. Some more pylons. They were completely dark also, but it's cool to see what shows up later. Mm -hmm. I was looking up through some grass at the side of the road lit up all nice and golden. I walked down to a, a gas station that was a little down the road. I don't know, just so it looks so crisp. The blue, the red, the streaks of the cars going by. You can see, these are like a 20, it's like a 20 second um, picture, but look at, look, at, look at how much the stars moved even in that amount of time. I want to do one of those pictures. How long does it take, you think? I've seen those pictures of people where, like, the stars make huge streaks across the sky, but people usually do those in, like, national parks or something where it's super dark in the sky. And you can see a lot. I mean, I, a lot of stars here, a lot more stars showed up than I expect. I think this is a, either an airplane or a shooting. It must have been an airplane that went by right here. Maybe a satellite. I don't know. Let's see some clouds. Love these things. Love all these shapes. Here I took a, I did the thing and I jumped around with my flashlight and my phone on. It almost looks like it says some word. Like Google or something. You can see my leg right there. My knee right here too, I think. My legs here. <laughs> cool tree. Must have been some little lamp down there shining through. 
little ferns. I think this spider thing, this Grande long legs, that's what we call them here. I don't know what you call them where you are. I think it was dead. Not really a spider. Maybe it is a spider. I always thought they were not spiders because they only have six legs, but this looks like it has eight legs, unless maybe these two front legs are like feelers or antenna and not legs. But it has these two little mandibles. Maybe the, I don't know. It looks pretty spidery. These are uh, magnolia seed pods, like not bare, like blossoms. I don't know how to describe it, but they look so cool. Sorry, I'm like, I like feeling the draw. I like feeling the photograph with the mouse pointer. This this flower was so tiny, and it wasn't until I pointed the camera at it, I saw all these tiny little hairs on the inside of the flower. Maybe that's for like catching the pollen off of the bee's leg or something. Weird beans on this one tree. Walking around. Your auto center. Honesty is one of our most valuable tools. This place, I think it must have just been the time I was walking by. It looked totally derelict and abandoned. But... I was going by another time of day and it was bustling. Like they had cars in there. They were working on them. People walking around. They had a cool little uh, guy working on a car right here. Cute. Cell phone towers. Very cool. I love these. Here's another one. It, it wasn't until I posted these later that I realized that uh, this, this is the same thing as this it just doesn't have any of the antennas on it yet right right it's the same thing right are these little things supposed to be for like the installers can stand on those or something i don't really know how big it is i guess this is the ladder right here you, a person might be like this big yeah they could stand up there clouds mm. more clouds oh yeah beautiful tasty scrumptious there's a sunflower at school. I was walking around at school. It's, it's lost some of its leaves or whatever these are, seeds. Something is messed up there because it's dragging, peering, perched on the barbed wire. And then there's a little bird, yellow bird up here too, out of focus. Beautiful cloudy sky back there. Oh, Clouds and power pole, light pole. And then I walked into the steam plant. I don't know if I should have been in there, but all the doors were open. There were no signs saying I shouldn't have been in there. I think this place like generates like hot water or maybe it does something for the, for the college. I just loved how brightly colored all the insulation on all these pipes were. This is me going upstairs to where these huge turbines were. It's like an com interesting combination of an old building with like highly polished, well-maintained machines. Danger. Confined space. I didn't go anywhere. It said enter by permit only. I didn't go in there. Okay. So I don't know if I broke any rules or maybe I, I don't know. Danger. Confined space. Are they talking about inside this little door, do you think? I don't know. Then downstairs, there was these huge tanks. I think there's steam or water in there. Another confined space sign. Or is it, is it just talking about this whole area is a confined space? Cool pipes and machines and bolts. And I don't know. I like all of this stuff. I like these little things. Are these so like the thing underneath it? This machine down here can like wiggle and move a little bit and not affect the the connection same thing with these things do these uh, uh, accomplish the same thing as these you think the rubber in between the hose clamps i don't know like some sort of microwave tower this is our school at uncg not our school our library at uncg part of the library is like this weird concrete Brutalist tower with no windows at all on one side of it. And here's, there are some windows on the other side. 
You could create some cool shapes on and shadows though. Oh. This this is this is a YouTube uh, thumbnail in the wrong folder. Um clouds. Nice. More clouds, so puffy. A squirrel. Hey. Hey. I figured out with squirrels, they stay they pretty the squirrels pretty much only move when I move. If if I find myself near a squirrel and I stop moving, they usually stop moving. And they're just trying to assess if I'm a threat, I guess. Or sometimes if I stand still for long enough, they decide I'm not a threat and they just keep on going about their business, sometimes walking really close to me. But by then, usually sometimes people in their houses notice I'm, I've been standing right outside their house for like 15 minutes and stuff gets weird. This guy was pretty near the squirrel, but he was working on something here. And I said, hey, how's it going? He's like, hey. And I was like, can I take your picture? He's like, he just kind of like shrugged. So I was like, okay, thanks. Have a good day. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to ask people if I can take their picture. More cool power lines. I love this tangle right here. Oh, beautiful. Cool bugs. I think this is milkweed, and these are, people on Instagram told me these are um, called assassin bugs. I think maybe they're the larval version. They're babies. I actually don't know if this is called milkweed, but I think something, maybe other people said they were called milkweed bugs, or maybe the Wikipedia article said that these eat milkweed. I think it's interesting that these are two different plants, and they're like, they've like bridged them. I took this from a moving car. My ominous clouds, I think. Some more cool clouds. They look almost like splotches of watercolor. I don't know why this one's so blurry. These are all taken from the car. Even this one, I like how the sky is reflected in these windows and there's some little birds flying around. I like the little disconnects here. Like, this doesn't even look like it's touching. Like, it looks like it's almost touching. There's a, there's like a one pixel gap. Oh, that's a good one. I don't I don't when I edit these I don't think I significantly change the blueness of the sky. This sky was just intensely blue. Oh yeah, you can see some hint of sun rays here. Oh, these are like. Amazing. Love these. Oh yeah, this might be the same cloud just from a different perspective. Oh yeah. It's my hand. I had to like arranged. I tried to do like a little still life photography. I was like, oh yeah, let me like arrange some stuff. I took like this dead bouquet, put this mirror here on a step ladder, these gloves, because I wanted something that was like a little bit different. This weird anti-vibration gloves I had. This is my hand in that mirror. I don't know, kind of mixed results. But the, I know, and I, I want to mess around more with like arranging items just for the purpose of taking a picture. Here I was on top of a parking deck when I was at the baseball game I, I talked about in a couple of videos ago. And uh, here's a storm you can see approaching. Look at the, the rain falling down out of there. And there's sun rays coming in this way. It's like a V shape. There's clouds. Oh, these look so good. They're like kind of golden. There's something in the sky right there. Probably, probably a UFO. Just a little tiny one. There's some clouds. Is that a wind vane? At first I, I assumed it was like, I hadn't looked closely at it. I assumed it was just like a weird cross, but it looks like a wind vane that got blown too hard. Kind of tweaked at an angle. Beautiful clouds here. This is the men's bathroom at the baseball stadium. No mirror, just like a big blank wall. Isn't that kind of weird? It's probably, I don't know. It was just a very, I was just struck by how plain the bathroom was and kind of soulless and scary. I took a, I went down. This is me standing like down at the very bottom of the uh, seating. 
there is you can see the faint hint of a like a a net right here because there's a net here to catch like bow, balls like foul balls and stuff but this guy was like warming up or something i snapped some pics i think that's it all right let's look at 3d stuff um here's my most recent one i've been using rhino which is a 3D modeling program. It's probably really expensive normally, but I, while that loads, I am thirsty. What I, was, what I was trying to say is I have like a educational license, right? So here's like a piston thing that I made recently when I posted this. I was just having fun making this like, you know, first I made this little base part and then uh, the cross arms and then I made these arms and then I was like, oh yeah, I could kind of connect it all and make it look like a piston. And then I had this idea that I could like connect everything and uh, make like a whole like row of engines like a row of them like their um, engine, like engine pistons, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like this. And they would all pump at a different time or something, or maybe some would be upside down or pointed in the shape of a, I don't know. Anyways, they're supposed to animate. I, if I hit play right now, it won't work because um, the animation was designed only for one piston. Now, if you watch it on Instagram, you notice that it goes about four times faster, which was just because I sped up the footage I recorded, but that's how it works. I animated, I animated it with this plugin called Bongo, which pretty much just like connects all these, these different ob objects that I made. And then, yeah, I like flipping through like the different, like different ways to look at it. Pen. I like pen because then I can pretend it's something I drew. I think it takes a long time for it to draw all these little circles. Mm -hmm. A really long time. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Pretty cool. You can animate it in any of these... Um, Display styles, though. Yeah, maybe it's steam powered. All right, next. What else should we look at? Here's one that I made quite a while ago. That one's pretty cool. Did like a little cut cutaway section, and uh, yeah, like these pipes go up here, but I cut them off there. This is supposed to be maybe well, I, I could animate this one too and make the br this brush part spin. I don't know what else I would animate there. I would have to like make all these one one object. I guess I wouldn't really have to make the uh, central arm spin because it's kind of featureless. I don't know if you'd notice. Um, let's see what it looks like in pen. Oh yeah, that looks cool. I don't know, I was just messing around. I do a lot of, I like how I can use this to make something and then, uh, just kind of like endlessly, you know, like array it around a circle. That's what it's called. This transform array along curve. That's how I do these like shapes and then make them into a repeat them around a circle and stuff like that. It's kind of satisfying. There's a big spiral here in the middle. All right, let's look at another one. Oh, 
I think this one's only partially half made. This is one I was, I wanted to make like a, you know, you ever seen those diagrams of like a undersea cable and it shows like all the different types of like sheathing and special things and uh, protection and insulation. And then it shows, and it gradually like goes up like here, 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 and it, until eventually at the very end, you've got like one little cable poking out the end. I kind of want to do something like that. Um, but a twist on that. But then I was like, hey, I should learn how to, there's this other thing called grasshopper that I wanted to learn how to use because I thought it would make what I was doing here uh, a lot easier. But then I never actually learned what I needed with grasshopper. So this is where this one's still at. Okay. This is a, some sort of massager. I made some part of this and then like, like this, 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 and this are the same thing. And all the little things, this and this, and all the things sprouting off of it are just copied again here and here and here. And only rotate it a little bit so it all fits together without everything touching itself. And then I made this little thing at the top with the little tendrils coming down hmm. I'll look at this in pen mode oh yeah oh yeah that looks cool there I don't know I just like <laughs> I get a lot of satisfaction from making them and then just looking at them after I make them just these random weird little objects like this I don't know <laughs> like it's the same it's the same kind of um, satisfaction I get from making a drawing than looking at the drawing, I think. Even though, for some reason, this is even better in some ways. I don't know. I've been really enjoying it for some reason. And here's another one. A lot of pipes in this one, I think. Oh, yeah. These um, red lines are the guidelines I use to draw all these pipes. I can turn that off. Oh, yeah, I like that one. This reminds me kind of how this one is like pulled away. Kind of reminds me of like the Stephen Beasties, you know, like cross sections. Sometimes you'd still see like pipes going through and stuff. Basically, I made one section that was like this big. And then I copied it like three or four times this way. And then I copied it, you know, like six times down. And then I made this cool looking thing. Then I put these, these little pipes going all the way through with little red lines sticking out. And, uh, like I could take this again. I didn't, I didn't move it over. I don't remember exactly how wide this is, so. Hold on, I just need to change my view and it'll be easier. Let's go to the. Let's do shaded. Hmm, let's do front shaded. Here we go. There we are. I could have just measured the distance. Okay, so this didn't meet up though. I didn't do what I wanted either. I think I copied it in the wrong direction. I think I should have done it from the right here. Yeah, let's do it this way. Here we go. There we go. Now it's even wider. Um. I'm 
trying to see how far I just moved it. I guess it doesn't tell. I'm doing it in a not, not very professional way, but it's working. Oh yeah, now I've got a real rack of pipes here. Some of the pipes still go all the way through, as you can see here. See, the more you copy it in different ways, you get like different patterns appearing. I like that. All right, show you a different one. Uh, no, I'm not gonna save the changes to that. This one. This one I made f to 3D print and I actually 3D printed it. I'll show it to you later. It's like two or three inches along each side. You can be a judge of how the problem with it being so small and having so much detail is that uh, I don't have like one of those resin 3D printers. I just have a regular one, so it doesn't really get all of this detail. But I'll show you the result of that later. Here's another one. This one, I also 3D printed these two pieces for the idea that if I could, I don't know, I didn't want, I kind of wanted to make something like this in real life, but I didn't want to 3D print it like so many times. So the idea was that I could take these two pieces and make a plaster mold of them over and over again and make this a, a plaster version of this. But I never ended up doing it because the plaster mold making I know how to do, you don't really guarantee that you have a, a flat back because you need to put these back to back to make you know, this shape here. And I, I, I can't, and it's annoying to just 3D print this shape because then you get like all these support pieces that you have to clean up. Anyways, so I think it still looks cool. Some of these red lines I added just for fun because they make it look more interesting. <laughs> Um, I'll come back, back, back to that one. This one, I'll show you the result of this. I actually 3D printed these and made plaster molds. I'll show you this in a second. I think it turned out pretty well. It's like a little proof of concept. There's all the guides I had for the circles and stuff. The red lines are the guides. Then here. Somewhere in my computer I have some more, my earlier 3D stuff, but this is a big, a big model. It has a lot of shapes. Uh, struggling, my computer's struggling a little bit. I feel like I have a pretty good computer too. Because I think it's partly because I've applied like some materials and stuff to all these. Like, I applied like a gold material to these little teardrop shapes. And these are like plaster and these are like plastic or something. Oh, these are, these are glass. Allegedly. They don't really look like glass. It'll be interesting to animate this one, but my computer might explode. I just realized there's um, lines here. This should be guides, but I'm not going to clean all this up right now. Like I would just change object layer. There's probably a ton of lines, guidelines. Yeah, it looks kind of cool in black and white with all the red guidelines and stuff. I don't know. I love. I just. I don't know. I just love how that looks. It's like 
I made that. I think it looks cool, and I made that. It's like the best of both worlds. Mm. It's just a good feeling. Like, I, I don't know. That's just a feeling that uh, I like. All right, and I think that's it. I'll show you some of the 3D prints I made. They're not very good, but I'll show them to you. I don't know if there's anything else I need to show you on the computer. I don't really just want to start searching through stuff, but yeah. All right. I gotta say, this new uh, setup in here, the lighting is perfect for accentuating the pronounced double chin I am developing. And my extra fuzzy hair. Look, lately, I've been getting into this very weird thing where I... Look. You take this little piece of flooring right here, then you take this little chair and you put it down along with this little desk. These are models that I bought and put together and I don't have a good reason. You might be thinking maybe it's for Dan, that little man that lives in your apartment, in his apartment, in your house, in the living room, but no, he doesn't. He's not a child. He doesn't need school desks. These are just for me, somehow. The box they came in is adorable. Look at that. Love the aesthetic there. School desk and chair. And the best part is the back. I just love these instructions. I mean, these are like some of the diagrams I like drawing sometimes. I remember one time I drew swoopy lines like this, swoopy arrows, and it changed everything. I love how that drawing looked. And they don't think, these are like good introductory models for getting into model making, I feel like. I kind of fiddle with these, make them while I'm watching a movie or a TV, a movie, TV or a movie. And uh, there were only one part I had to paint here, which is the little feet part. Or as it says, uh, in the instructions, please apply black. So there you go. I have my little uh, my little <laughs> school desks. I've also ordered uh, another thing that, to go with these, which is like a little metal teacher's desk to go in the front with a little uh, little metal swivel office chair. And I gotta tell you, a lot of the reviews on that, the only bad reviews it have has are people thinking it's an actual full-size office desk and chair and uh, the questions are hilarious people saying uh, like I'm so confused is this full size or a toy and the people be it some of the people were like no it's it's not full size it's for like an eight or ten year old or something and it just goes on and on and people are getting so upset that but I don't blame them entirely because I think Amazon categorizes it as actual furniture. Because when I bought it, uh, I ordered it. It's like $18. And Amazon offered me expert uh, installation for $50. I could have someone come and assemble the chair for me. And I was very tempted to do this because um, just the thought of someone arriving at my house and being like, okay, where's the chair you need me to put together? And then I hand them a small box and be like, it's in there. It's this big, you know? And then I, would they sit there and put together my model chair for me? But then I thought about how it would really go. They would probably be upset that they came all this way to, for what it essentially amounts to a prank. And, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's mostly funny in my head and... It'll stay funny there. It's the kind of thing that I'll leave to other other YouTubers, I guess. This this is enough for me right here and my other my other desk when it comes. I could draw on these. I never was really the kind to um, deface and graffiti on desks. Maybe a little bit. I think I was too afraid of getting in trouble and I was too much of a rule follower. And maybe these ones are the ones I could draw on. My friend said I should stick a little piece of gum on the underside. Uh, 
There's room for tiny books in there if I figure out how to make tiny, tiny books. Oh yeah, the stuff I was going to, uh, the stuff I 3D printed, let me show you. Um, here's the one that I showed you. Check that out, pretty cool. It's just fun to, uh, it's like a kind of a stimming thing. I don't know if I'm using that correctly, but it's just fun to run your fingers across. It's very smooth on the back. And then that's just very satisfying right there. You know, I was recording another camera angle for these little chairs like this. But ne I never actually hit record. This is what I was meaning. <laughs> this camera angle, I never hit record on that camera. I just realized. So now you can see. Adorable. That's what's going on. So I got this little thing, 3D printed. Feels great. Looks great. Kind of a random assortment of little lines there. And then these three things. I also 3D printed. I was looking to see if I had the, um, oh, this thing also. This one, I had to uh, glue the joints on there. Like it didn't come out like this. I 3D printed three pieces and two little pegs to uh, glue on there. I think I used like super glue or something. I'm not sure. But it's cool to make something that can move like this. It's just kind of like a little proof of concept. I might have shown some of this stuff in a video before. I think I did, but in case you didn't see it, somewhere on my computer were these uh, 3D models, the models of these things, which is kind of what I was looking for. But I just like how these ones come apart, they move. This one is two pieces glued together. And then this goes in here. But it doesn't fit. You can see here these parts, you gotta like get it in the right grooves. There we go. Now it fits in there perfectly. And over here it doesn't though. So sometimes it takes a few tries. This one was one of the first ones I did just to see like what kind of tolerance I needed as far as the, the space between the two pieces as I designed them. This one is almost satisfying, but this, the sound of them, the layers of 3D printed material, it's a little bit cringy. It makes me like, unless I do it enough, then it starts to get satisfying for some reason. I don't know why. But I have another one of these somewhere. Where is it? All right, I'm back. It's uh, it's actually the next day. So a little bit of time shenanigans going on here, but at the time yesterday when I was filming the video, I couldn't find some of these items. And then today I found them. So I'm just gonna splice this in here in the middle of the video. Um, first, uh, here's a couple of other little wiggly wigglies that I was looking for. Check this out. Look at that. It's got like multiple rods and holes. This one is very satisfying to me. It's like, there's like multiple things that it latches onto when it slides, excuse me, onto there. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. It comes completely flush. Oh yeah, look how satisfying that is. Sometimes I put it upside down like this. That's also satisfying. Same thing with this one. This one, it's kind of the prototype for this one. And then there's this one, which is just a, a thing I made. Oop, out of focus. This one is just a thing I made in, uh, in Rhino to, to see how it would look if I 3D printed it. This one, it's pretty nice because um, depending on the pen, you can use it as a pen stand. Well, not that pen. I don't know if I have it. It takes a skinny pen. Well, 
I have a little uh, a little file. There you go, file holder. File file folder holder. Okay, and then this thing was the uh, the 3D model I showed you. We saw that there were like red dot red red lines making a dome shape. This is the the, the dome, and then this was the the well. You can see, it comes in in two parts. Basically, I couldn't just print. I couldn't just print this 3D part because uh, the way 3D printing works, at least with my 3D printer, I don't know if I printed it just like this, there would be little supports under all of this holding the rest of it up or if I print it like this, there'd be little supports under here and it's annoying. It makes the rest of the model not look so clean. So I split it in half so that the rest of it, or every part of it would have inbuilt supports, if that makes sense. And so then I could glue these together and then uh, the idea was, but the idea was I, I would put it here uh, in, a, in a process I'll explain to you in a second, uh, and then make plaster molds out of them and then glue those ones together. But I'm not sure if I know how to make them perfectly flat on the back so that when I, I mean, maybe I'll make them almost flat, but then once I've stacked several of them up so that they fill up this glass dome, they might, it might start leaning eventually. You know what I'm saying? Basically, the idea with this glass dome is that I know, I know whatever I put in here will look special. You know, like if I put one of these flashlights in here, it looks like a special flashlight. Or if I put like this Pomodoro timer in there, it looks like a special Pomodoro timer. Spray bottle, special spray bottle. It's suddenly like, maybe is it enchanted or something? It makes you wonder. So I thought about making something to put in there. It, it's already cool because I made something cool, but then make it and then put it in here. It's like cool again, right? I don't know. All right, back to your, back to yesterday. No, none of this will be here because I haven't found it yet in yesterday's timeline. Oh wait, I can show you another thing. In, yes in, in yesterday's timeline, I already showed you the little desks, right? Um, and I told you I was ordering another desk. That one came. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? The main problem here is that it requires a little bit I haven't opened this yet. I'll open it for you. It requires um, silver, black, and gray paint. I only have silver and black paint, so I'm gonna have to order some gray. There you go. That's all of it right there. Some of the pieces are already black, so you don't, you know, that eliminates some painting, but I think some of this I need to, you know, it requires some more. This one doesn't come with a little sample of floor like the other one did, interestingly enough. The main issue with this one, I was very upset. It's probably what I get for ordering things from Amazon, is that uh, they slapped the shipping label right here on the front. It took up the whole front of the box. And half the reason why I like these is because the boxes are so adorable. But uh, I slaved over it with some uh, Goo Gone and a, and, and a paper towel and stuff. And it almost, I almost got all of it off of there. You can see there's a slight nick right there. It's just like, why? I mean, I know it's like wasteful to put this in another box or even like an envelope or something, but that would have been really nice. Like this to me is part of the product to like, don't put a big sticker all over it. I want this sans sticker. Okay, now back to yesterday in your regu regularly scheduled programming. Here's one, the, see, the difference about this one is uh, a lot of the edges look a lot rougher because I didn't only do um, pieces with no overhang. So this one has a lot of overhang. So there are a lot of like support pieces in there. I had to get in there with pliers to get out of the way. 
Also, this one used to have shrink wrap on it. I just wanted to try making something like this, and then I shrink wrapped it to see what it looked like. I took the shrink wrap off, though it didn't. It wasn't quite as cool as I expected. It was just a little experiment. Um, oh yeah, the final thing was the pieces I 3D printed and then molded power cable for something else. Had to go get this from the shed. There's some spider webs on here. Here are the 3D pieces that you saw earlier in Rhino, which I 3D printed. Okay, nice. So I took these and then I took um, a tube of 100% silicone caulk and uh, pretty much slathered it all over here. Well, I, I kind of took it and put it in my hand and squished it on there. But I had like really, I would take it with um, watery, um, it's really, really soapy water to keep it sticking to my hands, but I do dip the silicone in the water to start it curing. Just making sure this doesn't have my address on it. I put it in the water to start it curing, and then the, the soap in the water would keep it from sticking to my hands. And I'll just squish it down over it to make a mold. Here's what the mold looks like. Like this. So here's the mold made out of uh, here's the mold made out of silicone. So all the pieces were in here, like so. Some of them might be going in kind of backwards because uh, they're symmetrical, but they should fit in since they are symmetrical. Okay, so they're in here like this. And then before I took them out of the mold, they're in here, they had the, the uh, silicone piled up on top. And then I took a bunch of uh, Sorry, there's lots of like little spiders and stuff. Took a bunch of plaster and piled the plaster up on top. And piled the plaster, plaster up on top like this and let it harden. That way I had a something to hold the mold because the silicone is, uh, it's really, squishy and can move of course so then i took these pieces out like so popped them out smells it still smells like vinegar by the way and then i would have this in here and uh then i would take a a, a stronger type of plaster called um I don't remember what it was called, but some other stronger type of plaster that's less likely to break. And I would pour it in there. I get, you know, these little guys would be in there. This is what it would look like at the end. You don't usually push the pieces back into the mold, but for illustrative purposes, I will. <laughs> Right, this, this is what it would look like at the end, like so, right? And then you would dig, dig the mold back up out of, out of the, this big one is called the mother mold. Pop it out of there, pop your pieces out after they dry. And then I did that two more times, like three times total. I also tried it with the cap of a marker, just putting some uh, silicone around the cap of a marker, and that's the result I got right there. Kind of an interesting little shape. Pointless, but cool. So basically, what does this get me? It gets me the ability to reproduce these shapes that I 3D printed several times. 
since I made since I made sure they all met up in similar ways on the edges of the tiles, I could make little little patterns out of them like this, or any way you want, really. There you go. And then I could shift it that way, maybe. Then I can make these great cool wiggly lines, or maybe I want to shift it this way. Have the wiggly line not go as far. It's a little bit weird because there's like a overhangs over here but I don't know it's just like a just experimenting I want to do this again I have another idea which is hard to explain at the moment but um, basically it will involve little tiles kind of the same size and I'll probably make a little grid of maybe maybe three by three instead of four by four of these and I'll try to record it this time. I didn't record this because I hadn't done it at home by myself yet. Instead of, this is a thing I learned last semester in school how to do, not with the 3D printing, but with the silicone and the tiles, not the tiles, the, the, the plaster and stuff. So I've got some more silicone and some more plaster and I'll try to record it. I mean, it's pretty satisfying, especially the part with squishing the, uh, the silicone on there with your hand. Uh, maybe it's something you can do too, so. It's just supplies I you can buy easily at the store. Pretty exciting. Also, I got to show you these flashlights I bought. Flashlight technology has come a very long way, gotten very cheap. Um, like for example, this is what a normal flashlight you know it does this. Like these flashlights, I think are like nine dollars, and so that's pretty good, right? As far as a flashlight goes but then you can focus the beam. And then it looks, it's, it's like, it like turns into just the LED. See, there's, maybe you can't see, it's too dark. There's just like a LED down there and it focuses it to be a beam of light, just the shape of the LED. It's so crazy. It's like, it's like a $9 lightsaber. At night, if it's even a little bit misty, uh, you can see the beam. All right, that's a, that's a flashlight I got. I have uh, several of them because they were so cheap, I bought like a bundle. And um, what else can I show you? If I think of anything else, I'll be back. And uh, we'll link up and we'll chat and I'll show you. And we'll be good. All right. All right, cool. Thanks for joining me in this video. Even though I didn't draw anything, it's good to show you some of the things I've been tinkering with. Chords. <laughs>